I always have heard, do not drink coffee in your videos. But of course, then it would be going against my shirt that literally says coffee cures everything. Fixes everything. Makes everything possible. Including this video. This video is sponsored by coffee. Hello world, my name is Amelia, and let's say I'm finally, hopefully, going to be able to get back to my regular programming schedule of getting these videos out, because it's just been a real pain in the butt. Um, when I've had, like, a really busy schedule, I'm supposed to be going back to work next week, and here I am, failing to get videos uploaded on a weekly basis, because that's really been my goal, is about once a week. I really should be doing, like, twice a week, but... I don't usually have, um, like a huge range of videos to always be uploading. Like it just, I don't know. I think it's more so the editing that takes a lot of time. So anyways, I'm going to be making a very quick video here. Um, I know this is something that's been like talked to to death on YouTube. And you could probably go anywhere else on YouTube and probably find tons of people talking about it. But I just figured it would be unique if I at least talk about my experiences with dilating. So I know that we went over in one of my previous videos, we did go over what the dilating schedule was, at least according to the papers that were provided to me. Now I would actually say though, the dilating is completely different than what they tell you it potentially or it is. I remember coming out of surgery a week later they removed the packing um i i think i mentioned that in my second part to my gcs video and that was when i took with my dilators which these are this is the package they come in so these are just the regular sole source ones which um as i understand are very common um set of dilators that they give to trans women post-op um, there is like one or two other different ones out there, but I don't really know them. I've only ever heard people mention Soul Source. Um, if you literally go on their website, you can buy their dilators individually, as well as they actually mention like literally right on the page, it's like dilators for transgender women. Like I'm like, okay. Um, so there's four colors in here. There's an or well, an orange, a purple a blue, and then a green. Now apparently I've been told that there are, um, there is a fifth color. There's actually a total of six colors that they offer. So there's one before this and there's one after this. Now some patients receive a kit that comes with purple, blue, green, and then bright orange, which don't ask me why they had to make those colors too close together. Um, and then the way they go is the one before this is called a P1. This is called a P2, this is called size 1, size 2, size 3, and then size 4 for the one afterwards. Um, so this is pretty a pretty standard set, like I was basically getting at. This is what the dilators basically look at. They are curved at the end to help cur for the curvature. Um, they have this little notch in the front and three notches in the back, and then a total of five dots on the front. So... When I had my packing taped out, they started out with this orange dilator, the P2. Um, it went in incredibly easy. They were talking about, oh, oh my gosh, it looks so good, it's so deep, and things like that. Um, I was dilating with this one for about a week, maybe two, week and a half to two weeks. Um, and then it was very easy for me to then jump up to the purple dilator. Um, I was able to then do in this one for a little while. I remember then trying to go up to the blue dilator, but I was having like a lot of painful stretching um, in in the um, it, it was placing a lot of pressure on my pel um, pelvic bone, um, on my pubic bone. Sorry, I'm getting that wrong. And I just ended up going back to the purple one. So I did the purple one for a while. Um, for maybe another week or so and then at about week five they referred me to um, her name is Trisha she specifically works with KU Med for their pelvic floor therapy um, so it was funny because there was a little bit of confusion I ended up getting scheduled with a Trenda 
and then it turned out that Trenda wasn't even trained to do dilating for trans women. She was a pelvic floor specialist, but she wasn't specifically trained for this stuff. So she's like, oh, I'm sorry, we're going to have to cancel, and you'll have to come back tomorrow to see Tr <sighs> At least they were, like, felt so bad, because apparently I'm such a nice and kind and understanding person. They were like, oh my gosh, you need to come back tomorrow. Trisha will take care of you tomorrow. And I had already waited, like, two weeks. It was insane. So anyways, I saw Trisha. I love Trisha. She's amazing. Like, I get to talk to her about so many cool things. And it's kind of interesting once you can start talking to this person, you know, somebody who understands vaginas. And you're just basically like, yeah, um, vaginas do this and vaginas do that. So just kind of fascinating in that regard. <laughs> you just have these, like, you know, on-the-nose conversations and just, you know, like, no shame in vaginas. I mean, that's just something I was just not used to growing up. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Took in a little too much air there. So anyways, I once I started seeing Tr uh, Trisha, um, I did go back up to the blue dilator. It worked out. Um, it was much less painful. I think that was just because by the time... I have found that it really takes a lot to stretch. Um, as Trisha likes to tell me, she's like, it's not a race. It's just a marathon. You're not running a race. The goal isn't to win. The goal is to just get through it. So I thought that was always a really good key phrase right there for getting through the dilating routines. Um, she also told me, this is just something I can recommend to anybody getting surgery in the future, it is a really good idea to talk to your doctor about getting referred to a pelvic floor specialist, especially one that's trained to deal with dilators, because apparently there's a lot of misconception of how to dilate yourself. Even when you're in the doctor's office and they're holding the dilator and they're like, shove it up inside you, you're like, huh? <laughs> you still don't get it. Like, I, I found out that I kept dilating with my legs straight and while well, that was acceptable, um, I come to find out that it's not actually the best way to do it because it doesn't place the dilator pressure exactly where it needs to go. And I found out that like I had a misconception about how much depth I actually had. <clears throat> so the dilator, um, I found out that putting your legs up um, and then of course not squeezing your knees together are very important because if you're doing anything to place um, strain on your pelvic muscles while the dilator is in, that can cause, she, she used a word for it, basically it can cause the muscles to contract and then when things like the dilator is then removed that contraction doesn't go away because the muscles are basically, you basically have told the muscles that, oh, that's not supposed to be there. But by not contracting on the dilator and letting the dilator take its space, you are allowing those muscles to be like, okay, we're going to stay open. We're going to let the stretching happen. That's very important according to what I understand. Um, I originally thought it was a race, so there I was able of going up to the green dilator. Um, so we came to the conclusion that my goals is girth and depth because when it comes to sex, um, my biggest goals are actually being able to accommodate a partner in the future. Um, I'm not somebody who's just planning on having sex all the time, but it is a goal of mine to at least be able to have that one partner in the future. And I want to be ready to be able to accept almost anybody. So one of the biggest goals that I've had through this journey is being like, okay, well, what's the average American depth? Well, five inches is apparently the most average penis length. I was actually very surprised to find out that 3.7 inches is the average vaginal depth. So um, the fact that I can actually insert my dilator up to um, just right about between the third and the fourth line actually means that, so the fifth line on the dilator is 5.5 5 .5 inches. Um, for some reason the P2 has the dots in a difference, but like you put them next to each other, they're the same length, but the dots are not in the same place. I don't understand why they did that. But as far as the three other, the four dilators that come after, these dots are in the same spot. I can get right around between the third and the fourth, and I mean literally that's like putting it in and going and then measuring like right at the most visible point of out of my vaginal opening. 
So I have about that deep with, which is just in the upper four to five inches. Um, so it's like being really close to four. I, I actually have a measuring tape right here so we can on camera show you. Of course, that's my long measuring tape. Okay, so just to give some reference here, the total length of these dilators is nine inches. And to that line, like I said, five and a half inches. So to about where I am, it's like four and three fourths inches. Now the very first line is three and a half, which is still pretty good if that's the average vagina depth. Now the average penis length, like I said, is five inches. Uh, the other thing that we looked at was girth. Um, so apparently the average American girth is, I don't remember the number, but it was just slightly bigger than the biggest size 3 dilator. Um, that kind of freaked me out considering that um, when I was pre-op, prior to getting surgery, I wasn't even that big. Um, I was probably more around size 2. Um, but yeah, that kind of freaked me out because I'm not really looking forward to all that stretching, but apparently it's possible. So goal is to try to get to the green one. Apparently this is just slightly smaller and then the size four is slightly bigger. So kind of interesting when you think about it. So anyways, those are the dilators. Now to prep the dilators, they, I probably should not be admitting this on camera because I've been so bad. They recommend cleaning them with soap and water between every dilation, before and after, which is fine, makes sense to me, but I'm also kind of a lazy person. So I've kind of been lazy. I'm sorry if my doctors happen to watch this. I'm so sorry, but it's worked okay. I have not been actually soap and watering my dilators every day. However, I've been using an alcohol pad because basically I just have to keep them in one place and I have a habit of losing things and I'm usually like already set to go when I finally like oh right I'm supposed to be so what I started doing is I get a baby wipe because I have because you really have to have a baby wipe anyways to clean yourself before and after dilating so what I ended up doing was basically taking a baby wipe cleaning the dilator off and then taking the alcohol swab to kind of clean more meticulous um, it seemed to be just fine, I mean, because you could tell it was nice and squeaky clean. I mean, the alcohol pad is making it sterile. Um, and because they tell you you can do soap and water or an alcohol pad for, like, injections, like, because I'm on injections, I was like, I don't really think it would be that much different. But yeah, noted, they do tell you to do soap and water, but I've, like, maybe only done that a small percentage of the time. So anyways... You take your clean dilator and then you use your lube. There is apparently so many brands of lube out there. There's Astrogel and KY Jelly. You're just supposed to be using a water-based stuff. I picked this up off of Amazon. It's called Slippery Stuff. It was actually what my pelvic floor specialist recommended to me. Um, she's been using it in the office when we do our dilating there in the office for her to see how things are going. Um, and. I liked it. It worked. Also, it was probably the cheapest out of them all. I was using the Astro Gel, but then it got to the point where it was like, I can't keep spending $7 a bottle. Because having to dilate three times a day has come down to lots of gel being used. I probably go through a bottle a day. So I ended up going to this. Excuse me, I just gotta check the time. So I ended up going to the slippery stuff. This stuff was about, now this particular bottle, it was about 99 cents an ounce. Um, there's 16 ounces in here, and then the Astro Gel bottles, which were $7, had only 4 ounces in it. So you can see how this was. Uh, there was one other one that was like 89 cents an ounce that was the same brand, but I like, I couldn't tell the difference other than it, because this is water-based, um, paraben and glycerin-free. The other one just said it was paraben-free and glycerin-free, so I was like, but it said water liquid. The only difference was this one said gel, the other one said liquid, and I'm like, I don't, I don't get it. So anyways, 
So basically you take this and you would take your dilator and the way I found it works, they've always told me, use so much gel. Well, I've actually started coming bad on gel because it was just getting all over the place. So anyways, they would just basically say, apply it. I usually like to go from the first dot to the end. I do about two squirts and then you use your fingers to spread it like this. Um, a lot of people say that it's kind of hard to do the, um, to like the dilators are cold when you go into it, but for some reason I never really had an issue with that. So hopefully I covered anything, everything. This video has gone twice as long as I actually was hoping to go. I was hoping to cut it down. So anyways, I'm going to leave you here with this video. Do not forget to subscribe. I know you've been watching, you probably are going to watch a couple of my videos. I mean, my channel is like very, very slowly. I will say this much, I have started getting downvotes on my videos, so I would say that's probably a sign of somebody actually going somewhere with the YouTube. Did I just say the YouTube? Am I? I'm not really that old. I swear, I am not that old. I'm actually pretty young. Anyways, so I'll talk to you all later, and um, namaste, I guess?